crossovers. We all know them. We, I, I was actually going to say we all love them, but honestly, crossovers are one of those things that you never know whether or not it's going to be good or not. But, fuck it, we, <laughs> you know, let's just cut to the normal intro. Hola y hello there, gamers, bronies, y all the in-betweens. My name is Itzel, or Itzel, whichever way you want to pronounce my name, otherwise known as Kawaii Pony Productions. I'm an artist, animator, singer, voice actor, and a bunch of other shit here on the YouTube platform who makes content on things related to animation, gaming, and just in general, fictional and fandom related media. Yep, so I'm doing this video again, um, <laughs> and this is not even like the first time I've recorded this version of the Crossing Bounds explanation video. This is like the third, fourth time, I don't know, maybe more, I can't fucking remember. But yeah, why has this been the case? Why has it been taking me a lot longer to make this version of the Crossing Bounds explanation video? Well. Burnout has been a bitch, basically. And I've been kind of all over the place. To those who don't know, this video kind of isn't my main priority right now because I'm more focusing on my video for April, my main one, which is the MLP Autism video. It's a video that I've wanted to make for over a year now. I've gone and started recording it already. I'm mostly done with the scripting. Um, I'm gonna start compiling scenes to get from My Little Pony for that video. Um, and I actually have the entirety of Lesson Zero saved on my school computer. Um, to those who don't know, that is that video is specifically aimed about like Twilight Sparkle, um, what it's like growing up as the burnt as the gifted child the expectations of gifted child to burn out and how it's actually a really big thing that a lot of autistic people deal with. And I even speak from my own experience as an autistic person in the school system. <laughs> it's, it's not a fun thing, but yeah, um, it's about all that stuff and why basically me and a lot of autistics in the My Little Pony fandom relate so much to Twilight. Um, <laughs> And I, I really love how the video has been turning out, and I cannot wait for you guys to see it. I really cannot wait. <laughs> but yeah, um, I've been all over the place right now. I've been writing Crossing Bounds itself. Um, I've been writing Candy Rye, my four-part MOP Infection AU, which I'll talk about in another day. Um, the History of Heathers video is going to get started on soon. Um, there's a lot that's going on for me, so I'm just, like, trying to do what I can to get myself back on track with YouTube, but, yeah, um, I'm very sorry, and to those wondering why I'm redoing the Crossing Bounds explanation video, you know, the one that I did back in December, it's not even that, it hasn't even been that long, so why am I redoing it? Well, basically, it's because I really hate how it turned out. <laughs> And that's kind of my fault because I wanted to make it shorter than my MLP creepypastas video. But really thinking about it, I probably should be okay with making this video long. In fact, maybe even longer because the YouTube algorithm is a bitch. So if YouTube actually gets this video on the YouTube algorithm's radar, then hey, that could give me more watch hours, which is really saying something, because the MLP Creepypastas video got me, like, halfway through that. <laughs> uh, okay, but in all seriousness, though, the reason why is because there's a lot of deep lore with this AU. And yes, a lot of it is because of all the material being used in Crossing Bounds. But, yeah, no, either way, because of everything going on in this AU, this is going to be a longer video anyway, so I'm not even going to fucking try to make this video short, okay? So, <laughs> I'm gonna make basically just a redone version of the Crossing Bounds explanation video. I'll be better explaining what Crossing Bounds is, um, the story of it itself, what are some plans for it, how many possible episodes will there be, um, and anything else like that. So, let's begin! <laughs> 
Mario can surf barefoot. Why can't Sonic? Polygon, please stop asking to see our feet. It's kind of getting weird. Crossing Bounds is a multi fandom crossover AU series that's a crossover between Super Mario Brothers, My Little Pony, Sonic the Hedgehog, Steven Universe, Five Nights at Freddy's, Bendy, Cuphead, Amphibia, The Owl House, Undertale, and Deep in Homebrew. Yeah, that's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> well, keep up! But yeah, no, it's quite a lot, and oh boy, there's a lot to talk about with this story. So, first of all, I'm gonna have to talk about a little bit of the inspiration. I was gonna do a whole segment actually talking about all the inspiration that went behind this AU and everything, but because of how long of a conversation that be, I might have to make it its own separate video, but I will have to talk about like just right here I'm gonna talk about some direct stuff of like what were some fan made stuff that really inspired me to become that, that inspired me to do this. <laughs> Sorry. I'm thinking about like other inspirations and like my brain is completely zoning out. I'm somewhat doing this unscripted, so yeah. I'm reading off of the script that I made, but it's really bad, so I'm just also going off the fly. Um, but yeah. Some of the inspirations with the way the series is created, being made and everything, include Princess Trixie Sparkle by Magpie Pony. Come on, that is an absolute classic in the MLP audio drama community. Um, I might as well say this now, My Little Pony audio dramas are a major inspiration for this AU, because that is actually what first got me into the idea of making my own fan series at any point in my career as a YouTuber. Um, I remember watching Princess Trixie Sparkle for the first time when I was a little kid, and I fell in love with it immediately. So Princess Trixie Sparkle is definitely one of the first things I think of when it comes to my childhood. Um, I might even make a video about PTS one of these days, because I'd love to talk about the series at some point here on the channel. Another inspiration for sure was like, uh, oh god, I really do have to acknowledge this elephant in the room. Bendy and Boris quest, of, quest for the Ink Machine by Vlog the Great Rogue. To y'all who don't know, this was like one of the biggest Tumblr ask vlogs in 2017. In fact, this is how a lot of people first learned about like Bendy and Cuphead. This is where Cuphead and Bendy fangirls came from, and I know cause... Guys, I have a sad confession to make. As a lot of you guys know, I am a Bendy fangirl. I love Bendy. We've been married for four years, but... I have a confession to make. Quest for the Ink Machine is how I became a Bendy fangirl. <laughs> Ew. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. But yeah, no, like, this AU was fucking infamous. He's a fucking weirdo too, like, really massive creep. It's not that hard to find out all the weird shit she drew. Um, I'm not gonna address it, but I will- that's all I'm gonna say. Um, though this isn't me hating on the person that I grew up watching a dub of it through, which was Haley Senpai. Rest in peace, may, may she rest in peace. Loved her work. She was awesome, okay? Fuck Block the Great Rogue though, fuck her. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's definitely like some of the main inspiration. Like Tumblr ask vlogs from 2017 and My Little Pony audio dramas, as well as the fan series, The Owl House Revived by the lovely Liz. Um, I, as of right now, it's kind of in a weird production limbo. I could understand why Liz might be canceling it. I could understand why she'd continue it, but yeah, um, it's kind of up in the air, but I do recommend checking out the first two episodes. It's a really cool series. And even if it doesn't get more episodes, it's still cool and I highly recommend checking it out. So yeah, um, that's definitely like some of the inspirations when it came to like how I should make it work. Like basically I want to treat this sort of like an animatic for every episode like there would be multiple scenes and each scene would be done by a different artist maybe multiple if there needs to be that much assistance which i understand by the way um and because of the way this series is written i am gonna have to do a prologue season slash series it's probably more of a season so this is gonna be around five episodes and um, oh boy, 
I don't know if y'all are ready to hear this, but we will be working on two episodes at a time. Originally, the plan was to work on three episodes at a time, which honestly, that's a nightmare to do. I realized that like a good, probably a few months ago, not a few months ago, but like, yeah, no, it actually was a few months ago. Cause I remember I asked some of my friends to do some character designs for characters that were gonna appear first in season fuck in episode three and then later on i made the change of working on two episodes at a time for the prologue i'm like well now i might have to wait a little longer for these designs which i think is okay because it means we could workshop them a little more if they need to be more um polished or anything like that but yeah um and don't worry, because of how that's going to be done with working two episodes at a time, I will be kind of lenient with the due date. As long as the first episode comes out before I graduate high school, then I'm fine, honestly. <laughs> like, I'm alright with that. As long as it's before my graduation, then I'm fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, there's going to be five episodes in the prologue season. And it's basically more just going to be setting up the story for everything. And I'm, <laughs> I really like this. Um, so for episodes one and two, we'll only be introducing the character, some of the characters from Mario, MLP, Sonic, Steven Universe, FNAF, Bendy, and Cuphead. Um, just stuff from those series only. Um, and even so, we're kind of limiting on some of the stuff, like example... Um, we're not going to be seeing the FNAF character, any of the FNAF characters other than Freddy, um, in episodes one or two. With Bendy, as far as I'm writing, same goes with that. They will not be introduced to, like, episode four. Obviously, Bendy's still going to appear in episodes one and two because he's one of the leads, but y'all get what I fucking mean. Um, with Steven Universe, because of the way how this is being written... The Crystal Gems are just not going to appear at all in the prologue, but that does not mean they're not appearing at all. They will appear, just it's going to take some time. There's a little bit of development that I have. Um, I have a little bit of a reason towards why, and y'all are not going to be able to hear that fully yet. Ooh. Ooh, boy. Y'all are not going to like that, but it is what it is, okay? Accept it. <laughs> but yeah, um... That's kind of the plan with that for sure. Um, and the episode three will be when the when some of the characters from Amphibia and the Owl House are introduced. Um, and this episode is mainly focused on Anne and Luce as well as Steven and Freddy. There's a good reason as to why, and y'all will understand later. Um, but with Luce and Anne, y'all could kind of see why. And it makes sense because both original, like both the Owl House and Amphibia have that same isekai trope being used in the original material. You know, teenage girl is transported to a different world and has to find their way back home. And on, the, on that way, like has an adoptive family that takes them in and helps them grow as a person, you know? And I think it works even more because the endings for both Owl House and Amphibia are very different from each other and have really good messages. And as much as I don't want to throw away the the ending of Amphibia, um, <laughs> it kind of will have to be at least the epilogue because um, with how this is written, um, we will see some of the characters from Amphibia itself, like. Not talking about the show Amphibia, I mean the world of Amphibia. Um, <laughs> Y'all will understand more what I mean later. I'm gonna say this a lot in the video, but yeah. And it just, you guys could see that makes sense. And this is where episode four comes in. Episode four will kind of have that similar thing where two, where two more franchises are thrown into the ring 
Um, obviously, as you could guess by what I said earlier, Undertale and Demon Homebrew's characters are going to be introduced in Episode 4. Um, originally, the Demon Homebrew characters were going to appear in Episode 5 for their first appearance, but I, I realized it would be kind of a bad idea. It wouldn't make sense story-wise. I didn't know how I was going to be able to write that in to make sense. So ultimately, I decided to add that into episode four, which I think made more sense because it follows an A and B plot. Well, sort of. Y'all will see what I mean. <laughs> I mean again, I'm going to say that a lot today's video. <laughs> Y'all will see what I mean, but it does make sense even from like the sentimental sort of way because to those who don't know, um, P. Shadek, aka Paula, the creator of Deep and Homebrew, um, she started to be kind of known a few years back. I love how I'm saying a few years back when I was like almost a decade. What? Wait, I just realized that was almost a decade ago. What the fuck? Y'all, I need to mentally process this shit. Hold on. <laughs> myself to sleep <laughs> but yeah um <laughs> that's she started becoming known for her undertale comic devs that she did with some of some voice actors like kaiser who later on became her boyfriend and everything and they're honestly a really cute couple i'll tell you all that um to, to those who are not familiar with those two um also hawker and um, Neon, aka Oliver. There's a lot of people. <laughs> if I were to, if I were to name them, um, my autistic ADHD ass would be fucking not functioning at all right now. I, I'm barely functioning, y'all. <laughs> so let's not get me exhausted. But yeah, no. That's how she first started becoming known. And I was like, ha, ah, you know, this actually works. It goes full circle. It goes full circle. And I do think it makes even more sense because I'm going to tell you all this now. I've been working on Crossing Bounds for like six years now at this point. Six years. In January, it has been officially six years since I first started writing Crossing Bounds. And when I did, it was originally a crossover just between Mario, MLP, Sonic, Steven Universe, FNAF, Bendy, and Cuphead. I love how I'm saying that like it's so normal. When it's like, no, I've just gotten used to the practice of saying this so quickly and in a certain rhythm that I really never lost practice out of just saying no seven. And I'm still getting used to even like adding the other stuff because... I added the characters of Amphibia, The Owl House, and Deep in Homebrew in 2021 for this AU. And I didn't add the Undertale characters in until 2022. <laughs> but yeah, no, in one of the, not the earliest drafts, but like one of my bigger drafts I had of Crossing Bounds, I'd say the 2019 to 2021 version of this AU. Um, I was actually going to start immediately with the whole story of the AU um, already, like the main thing, like no prologue or anything. And episode one was actually going to be a flashback episode where every where someone was going to ask, hey, how did you all meet anyways? And then Mario, Twilight, Sonic, Steven, Freddy, Bendy, and Cuphead, as well as my Sona itself, because yes, my Sona is in this AU. Of fucking course they are. <laughs> Reminisce about how they all met. And basically, I when I was writing this version, I'm like, well, since I'm adding a prologue in, it's going to make more sense if I make the prologue start with that flashback episode so it just again it goes full circle there's, there's <laughs> i love how to say that there's a lot of circles <laughs> oh yes circles aka one of an artist's least favorite thing to draw i'm not even joking drawing a perfect circle is a fucking pain in the ass oh my god Wait, where was I again? Oh, yeah, that's right, the story. Um, now, also with the production, the plan was to basically have maybe two to three seasons for the main story, by the way. 
Yeah, I know. The prologue 2 exists. And then that's not equating to the two to three seasons. And the idea was to have 10 episodes. I might make the episode shorter, not fully sure. I'm, I'm still working that out. I really don't know. I want to see how the production of the prologue goes before we fully do everything for the main story. That's kind of what I mean. I'm very sorry about that, by the way. I, I'm still learning about all this. I am a first time director after all. I'm not going to get my shit perfect, okay? But, yeah, um, that's kind of the plan. Now, time to talk about the actual fucking story. I, I know, I've been talking for like 10 minutes and have not, actually almost 20 minutes, and have not talked about the actual story. I am very sorry about that. But, hey, we're now actually getting into the story itself, so let's get into that. Um... Basically, the story follows the characters from Mario, MLP, Sonic, Steven Universe, FNAF, Bendy, Cuphead, Amphibia, The Owl House, Undertale, Deep in Homebrew. I hope I'm not forgetting anything or else my autistic ADHD ass is going to be so fucking pissed at myself later on as I'm editing this. I'm going to be pissed at myself, aren't I? <laughs> um, it follows the characters from all that um, stuff. Basically... Living in a multiverse, like, you know, there's a bunch of different dimensions and shit. And thing is this, they don't fucking know this. There's very little people who do. And those very little who do have to be very secretive about all of this. And one day, you know, the events of episode one fucking happen. What is episode one story? Well, you'll find out later. <laughs> Uh, just, just kidding. I might as well tell y'all. Episode 1 basically follows Mario, Twilight, Sonic, Steven, Freddy, Bendy, and Cuphead as they're all teleported to a different dimension. What Basically what I like to call an abandoned dimension. Where basically it's just very empty, very hollow, it's abandoned, everything's withering away, there's no one living there really, and... Nobody really knows why it is abandoned, but it just is. It likely has been for thousands of years at that point, at least. And they don't know how the fuck they got there. So they're all trying to help each other find their way back home. Obviously, by the end of the episode, they do. Um, they were supposed to have their memories erased because that's kind of how shit goes, but they don't. So you know what they do? Basically form like a secret friend group at first. Yeah, I said at first. As time goes on in the prologue, they basically decide to form a rebellion of sorts to try to unify the multiverse. And yeah, no, shit will definitely backfire. But yeah, by the main series, some of the dimensions will already be starting to be unified. Or what I'm just calling it the unification process, basically. Um, where other dimensions will be starting to allow um, citizens of those dimensions be able to travel to other dimensions and just willfully be able to do as they please. You know, just be able to live life and maybe get to know new people that they've never met because they're from a completely different dimension that they've never been to till recently or something like that, you know? Um, so they're now trying to form this unification of all to of all the dimensions and everything and at the same time deal with their own personal lives their own struggles what they want to try to achieve for their futures and also now have to save the world i fucking guess because oh boy shit is going fucking crazy who's the main villain y'all will never know well you will know by the end of the of the prologue, but that's up for y'all to guess who's gonna be the main antagonist. There's a lot of characters that obviously could have the potential of being the main villain. Um, I have it already planned out, but y'all could still be guessing. <laughs> and y'all will definitely find out who it is by probably episode four. I was originally saying episode five, but now really thinking about it, you'll probably be able to tell by like episode four. Um, really depends what sort of little 
hints I put in throughout the series, but fuck my computer. Oh my God. It just made a notification. Oh my gosh. Shut up. But yeah, um, that's sort of the story. Um, <laughs> there's a lot going on for sure. And I'm going to say it now. Um, I, I do want to quickly talk about this when it comes to Deep and Homebrew. Since not much is written when it comes to Deep and Homebrew yet in canon, um, that that is going to make things maybe delay a little longer. But even so, I'm really excited to like even just write the Deep and Homebrew characters into Crossing Bounds because I love this series. And oh, um, yeah, speaking of which, speaking of characters, there's a lot of characters that will not be appearing in the prologue. <laughs> so I might as well list some of them, such as Wario, Waluigi, the Koopaling, Starlight Glimmer, Trixie, Princess Caden, Shining Armor, Flurry Heart, the Crystal Gems, Connie, Greg, the Diamonds, any FNAF character that isn't from the first game, except maybe William Afton, probably him just being the exception. Actually, I'm going to say almost any FNAF character that isn't from the first game is just not going to appear at all in the AU. It just... Look, it makes writing this AU a lot easier, okay? <laughs> Sammy, Joey, well, most of the Bendy characters. There's a reason why in the plot, but I will not be talking about that in today's video. I'm too exhausted to, and in fact, I'm still kind of writing that. Um, but yeah, I will say that now. Um, any characters from the world of Amphibia itself, Arcadian, Marcus, Maxwell, almost every Undertale character, I'm very sorry. Look, they will be appearing in, <laughs> in the, um, main series though. Do not worry about them though. Um, and obviously there's a lot more because God, there are so many characters with all the material being used. So yeah. Now, time to talk about what's probably going to be my least favorite part of this video. The lore changes and the timeline shit. So enjoy that part. Jill, Gregory, I need you to get in my hole. Huh? Someone help me and put me out of my misery, please. This is the worst part of the video. Now, time for the fucking timelines and lore changes. A.K.A. God, when will my suffering stop? Probably never. Okay, let's start with Deep and Homebrew since I think it's just best to talk about it first. So Deep and Homebrew. There isn't much I can fully go, go off of it. As of right now, there's not much written of the current version of Deep and Homebrew. So right now, I'm just gonna say I cannot have anything that's changed with its lore or timeline. Okay? Yeah, there, I'm done. Yay! Okay, which one's the next one? Mario and Sonic. Okay, that's easy. So since this shit isn't really, like, heavy lore-driven or anything like that, guess what? It doesn't matter. The prologue takes place after their most recent games, which as of right now are Super Mario Wonder and Sonic Frontiers. Okay, let's get into Amphibia and the Owl House and Steven Universe. Okay, so with Amphibia and the Owl House, Episode 3 takes place actually after their series finale. So it takes place after watching and dreaming and the hardest thing. No lore changes, so there. We're good. Um, as for Steven Universe, um, the first two episodes take place before the series finale, The Future, and episode three takes place a few weeks after, so yeah, there you go. Um, oh, now we're actually getting to the difficult shit. I just realized where I was at with the script. Help me. Um, I guess we're hitting the nitty gritty now. Um, oh boy, there's a lot. <laughs> Let's start with Cuphead, because it's probably going to be the easiest when it comes to this. Okay, so when it comes to changes, the first encounter that Cuphead and Mugman have with the devil is different from the show, as yes, I am mixing both the game and the show's lore, but trying to fix it in a way that makes sense for at least this AU. Um, the first encounter with the devil is indeed the game itself. So yeah, just want to let that be known. And... Aside from the ending, shit is the same. And before anyone asks about King Dice, since they know that in the game that King Dice works for the devil, and in the show they don't, the best way I'm gonna put this in is that they actually think he's a sulk. Um, 
like one of the people that owes their soul to the devil. So there, easy fix. I'll probably have a better explained version of it like later on in the future, but for now, that's kind of the best way I could put it in. Anyways, um, as for timeline, um, episode one of the prologue takes place before the game itself or the show, so we are good. Episodes two to five take place during the events of the show and after. As for Delicious Last Course, there's a little bit of a time skip by like a month or two between episode five and the first episode of the main series. So Delicious Last Course is in that little sandwich area of a time scan. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, we're good. That was quick. Now, time for Five Nights at Freddy's, which, oh god, please someone help me. Like I said earlier, we're only using the game characters from the first game, and aside from that, very little characters outside of that. There will be some of the human characters like Michael and Vanessa, aka Vanny, um, William, aka Peepaw Springtrap, Grandpa Boy. We all hate Springtrap in this household. Seriously, fucking die already, dude. Fucking die already. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. We're also kind of mixing the lore of the first game with the movie. Um, I know some people are gonna hate that because they're probably gonna be wondering about things like, you know, if Michael is the son of Afton or Vanessa is. Um, in this universe, we're still going by game lore, and yes, Michael is. Also, Abby does exist in this universe, just I am still working out how that's gonna work. She's not related, though, to William, so she's like his, I don't know, fucking stepdaughter or some shit? I don't fucking know. This shit is confusing, okay? I am still working that shit out. Um, but yeah, no, she's not related to William, but Michael is. Um, as for how Vanessa knows... That I'm still working out, okay, guys? Oh, oh yeah, by the way, this takes place, like, years after the movie, okay? And the first game, I guess, by old technicality. So, yeah. Also, before anyone asks about, like, the dreams and shit like that, um, that is still technically a thing in this universe, just instead of it being in, like, the fucking park, which was weird and stupid to me, like, come on, someone would have fucking noticed that this kid was being kidnapped. What the hell? Oh my god. What I was saying was that instead, it is the bite of like 87 or 83 or whatever the fucking hell it's called now. I don't fucking know anymore. The fucking lore of this series doesn't make any fucking sense. I'm trying my best, guys. I love FNAF, but I do not know anything about the lore. I wish my autistic ADHD ass knew more about the FNAF lore than the My Little Pony lore, which we're getting into later because that's probably the worst part of all this. Um, but yeah, no. Um, that's kind of where I'm gonna go with that. It takes place years after that, and yeah, no, I'm done with FNAF. Okay, we're good. Um, anyways, next, Bendy. So with Bendy, we take place- this actually takes place in like an alternate universe where everyone was able to get out of that fucking stupid cycle thing. Okay? So yeah. It's probably been like a few months to a year or some shit since that's happened. Bendy, Boris, Alice, Audrey, and Henry are all living together in a new life, kind of near the Inkwell Isles. So yeah, they're like in the outskirts of that area. But yeah, um, episode one, it just takes place after like six months or so after the events of Dark Revival in this universe. So yeah, we're good with that. Now what is probably going to be the worst part of all the lore changes and timeline shit. MLP. Why is this fucking kid's cartoon giving me the fucking worst case of all of this shit? Help me. Yeah, so there's a lot of rewrites I have to do for Friendship is Magic. Well, not a lot, but definitely ones that do impact a lot of lore. Such as example. I'm removing these characters from the fucking winch- Friendship is Witchcraft. Wait, Friendship is Witchcraft. I'm sorry, guys. My brain is thinking witch Friendship is Witchcraft. I binge watched the show. Oh my god, someone help me. What I meant to say is that I'm removing these characters from Friendship is Magic. Why? Because racism. Now Don't be racist. I am a building. There's a lot of issues that Friendship is Magic has in relation to racism. I'm not getting into that video, to, into that whole thing, because one, 
Um, I'm not exactly the person, the type of person that's directly aimed towards with this issue. There's a lot of racism in MLP, but most of it is like anti-blackness and racism towards indigenous people. So I am not directly involved in this, um, but I will say as a person of color in the MLP fandom, yeah, racism is such a prominent issue in the show. You could tell it's written by white people. I get what they're trying to do, but it just failed miserably. So because of that, I'm removing these characters because it's just cultural appropriation. Also, I'm removing the School of Friendship because... Yeah, no, it was kind of useless. It really was. It's just so useless to me. <laughs> so, yeah, um, please, I'm just straight up getting rid of it. Um, now, as for people... I, oh, sorry, sorry, I, I was reading the wrong part, um, but yeah. Um, when it comes to timeline, okay, that's easy. Episode 1 takes place before the events of Season 9. Episode 2 and onwards takes place during the events of Season 9. Well, except Episode 5. Episode 5 takes place after the events of Season 9. So, Cozy Glow, T-Rex, and, um, and, um... Cozy Glow, Tyrk, and Chrysalis are all stone already. The only thing that hasn't happened yet by this point is Twilight being crowned as ruler of Equestria. That's all. That's all the difference with the timeline. Um, and between the events of the prologue, um, the little time skip area between the prologue and the main series, Twilight does become ruler of Equestria, and by the main series, Twilight is already ruler for about a month presumably so yeah there you go that is done oh god and i was able to cram this in into nine minutes yay now on to the fucking next segment oh dear god i'm saved oh this is probably the most fun part of the video yay okay okay i can't but like it sound white what i mean by this is that this is probably going to talk about some of my more favorite parts of writing fan projects and making fan projects. Not just writing, but, you know, everything when it comes to it. So let's, let's first talk about characters. Now, I know I talked about it a bit with, like, the plot points and even a bit when it came to the lore bits. But, like, this is where shit goes deeper. And by this, I mean headcanons. Look, headcanons are just really fun to me, and so are character dynamics. Like, that shit is probably some of the most fun things to write for me, especially in the crossover department. And since this is a fan project, it's like I could go as much ham-fucking-crazy as I want to with the headcanons. So, yeah. First of all- R? What the fuck? I'm fucking exhausted. Holy fucking shit. Um. First of all, I want to talk about neurodivergent headcanons. Like I've stated a few times in this video, you know, a good few times, I am neurodivergent. I'm autistic. I've been diagnosed for like three years now at this point. ADHD, I'm more self-diagnosed with it, but I do hope to get into the diagnosing process so that way I could get diagnosed for it and maybe get some medication because in all honesty, my intrusive thoughts and executive dysfunction is so fucking bad to the point where I probably should get help for it. Like, a lot. <laughs> I don't know, it'd probably help ease out a bit of my problems that I have. So... Wait, why am I talking about this in pub- Oh, you know what, let's just continue on with the video. Point is, I'm neurodivergent. And since I'm writing this series, there may or may not be times where characters as neurodivergent, maybe, sometimes on accident, sometimes on purpose, have fun trying to guess which characters are, are the ones who are on purposely written as, as neurodivergent, have fun trying to guess which ones are on accident, unless their name is Twilight Sparkle, in that case you are- WELCOME TO THE UNDERGROUND! Oh, my oh, this is probably the most fun part of the video. Yay! Okay, okay, I kid, but like... 
like somewhat. What I mean by this is that this is probably going to talk about some of my more favorite parts of writing fan projects and making fan projects. Not just writing, but you know, everything when it comes to it. So let's, let's first talk about characters. Now I know I talked about it a bit with like the plot points and even a bit when it came to the lore bits. But like this is where shit goes deeper. And by this, I mean head cannons. Look, head cannons are just really fun to me. And so are character dynamics. Like, that shit is probably some of the most fun things to write for me, especially in the crossover department. And since this is a fan project, it's like I could go as much ham fucking crazy as I want to with the head cannons. So, yeah. First of all, are what the I'm fucking exhausted. Holy fucking shit. Um, first of all, I want to talk about neurodivergent headcanons. Like I've stated a few times in this video, you know, a good few times. I am neurodivergent. I'm autistic. I've been diagnosed for like three years now at this point. ADHD, I'm more self-diagnosed with it, but I do hope to get into the diagnosing process so that way I could get diagnosed for it and Maybe get some medication because in all honesty, my intrusive thoughts and executive dysfunction is so fucking bad to the point where I probably should get help for it. Like, a lot. <laughs> I don't know, it'd probably help ease out a bit of my problems that I have. So... Wait, why am I talking about this in public? Oh, you know, let's just continue on with the video. Point is, I'm neurodivergent. And since I'm writing this series, there may or may not be times where characters as neurodivergent, maybe, sometimes on accident, sometimes on purpose, have fun trying to guess which characters are, are the ones who are on purposely written as, as neurodivergent, have fun trying to guess which ones are on accident. Unless your name is Twilight Sparkle. In that case, you are totally fucking autistic. Twilight Sparkle, I know what you are. I, I know we usually use that meme for context of, of characters being homosexuals, but like... Look, bitches, we all know she's fucking gay already. Her coat color is the gayest color of all time. And her mane is literally the bisexual flag. Let's all be honest. That is a queer woman right there. She is bisexual. Also, she's trans. J just cause, like, no proof or anything. I just think she's autistic. Oh wait, that's what I was meant meaning to actually say. To <laughs> say that she is actually trans. <laughs> but, yeah, no, she's totally autistic too, let's all be honest. <laughs> I mean, I make a whole essay video talking about that, so like... Why would the guy who's writing an essay video about Twilight Sparkle being autistic, not write Twilight Sparkle as autistic in any of their fan projects. You know? Um, conveniently enough, Autism Acceptance Month is also on the month of my birthday. Um, that's intriguing. Um, that's that's a weird coincidence if I if I do say so myself. Oh, okay. Anyways, let's get into the queer stuff. Let, let's get into the gay shit, bitches. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna tell you all this now. Majority of the fucking characters in this AU are gay. Like, majority of them. There's probably some few exceptions, cause like, um. Like, I'm gonna say this now, like, there, there's a lot of evidence towards more of these characters being queer than them being neurodivergent. <laughs> Except if you're a main character, because for some reason main characters are just so written as autistic coded, whether they mean to be that way or not. Um, but yeah, with queer coding, there's a lot of that. Um, example. In the Owl House, Dana Terrace has confirmed that majority of the characters in the Boiling Isles are gay in some way, except Odalia and Aldor. I'm sorry, why is Aldor out of that list? Let's be honest. 
he is totally queer in some way. He's either bisexual, gay, and maybe just forced into the relationship with Odalia because I'm pretty sure he did not love Odalia, or he's somewhere in the ace arrow spectrum. I'm sorry, but he cannot be heterosexual. What the fuck? But yeah, no, like with also with some of the Owl House characters, we know they are they have like canonic um canonic sexualities like Luz, Ida, and Hunter are confirmed as bisexual, Amity is confirmed as lesbian, Willow is confirmed as pansexual. Sadly, we don't know what what Gus is, but I'm pretty sure the motherfucker is bisexual. He's more into men, by the way. There's no proof. I'm just... I I'm sorry. But Gus totally is... Totally is more into men. He's more into men. Because I say so, guys. It's... It, um, Dana Terrace told me herself, guys. She, she, she told me. Please. Please think that. Please do think that. I, I actually mean this, guys. Uh, Gus Porter is bisexual because I say so. Um, anyways, with Steven Universe's characters, like, come on. Majority of the gems are canonically agender, go by she, her pronouns, and a good majority of them are lesbians. Um, except if you're Rose Quartz, I guess, because I, I, I guess she's into men. She's probably like the one gem that's actually into men, too. I mean, unless proven otherwise in the show. But but you know what? In all honesty, love that. Love that for her. Totally get that woman. She's totally somewhere in the bi pan umbrella for sure. Um, with My Little Pony characters. Bitch, where do I even begin? Future me, put up a fucking clip show slash slideshow to prove my point. Okay, thank you. B point is, they're definitely gay. Also with Sonic, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I'm not gonna label Sonic with any specific sexuality. Because in all honesty, I could totally see him being somewhere on like... The bi pants spectrum. I could also see him being somewhere in the ace arrow spectrum. But I don't know what I headcanon him as. I've tried so many times to headcanon him with something specific, but I just can't for the life of me. So Sonic is just unlabeled, but yeah, just know that he's so, he's definitely queer for sure. I don't know, I just think that makes more sense anyways. If I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I feel like the majority of the Sonic characters are just queer in some way. You just can't tell me otherwise. They, they just are. I will say Knuckles is totally bisexual. Also, Shadow, Definitely gay. Um, Amy is pansexual because I say so. I don't know why. I love head headcanoning the pink characters as pansexual for some reason. Like Pinkie Pie. I just think it's fucking cool. Um, Deep in Homebrew. Okay, so Deep in Homebrew. We know Marcus is canonically gay. Two ton. From what it seems like, he's somewhere in the bi-pan umbrella because we know he married someone at some- a woman at some point. Um, but we have seen him being shipped with, like, Marcus and also other characters. And Paula did not mind the fact that I shipped Tutan with Mario. So, yeah, no, it's totally canon that he's somewhere in the bi-pan umbrella. Otherwise, I don't know what majority of these characters fall under. Oh yeah, also Arcadian is canonically bisexual and, um, now for that. Samus is also canonically gay, so, yeah, we totally know that, like, a decent amount of the Deep and Homebrew characters are canonically queer. Um, I totally don't know, though, like, with some of the rest. Paula's never gonna tell me, isn't she? <laughs> Then again, it's probably for the better to not give the same person who's making a whole essay video about Twilight Sparkle being autistic. It's probably not a good idea to give that person specifically access to knowing what your fictional characters are canonically when it comes to being gay or not. 
Paula, you're probably gonna make a good move on that anyways. <laughs> that, uh, word of advice to anyone watching this video, do never, n never give me information about your OCs or else I will use them for, for my silly, evil, ADHD, autistic, gay, um, shit. It's just for the better. Also, Mugman has canonically dressed in drag. We've seen it before. Also, King Dice. He is voiced by a woman in the game. And in the Cuphead show, he's voiced by a man. So I personally like to think he's a trans man because I say so. Um, you cannot tell me otherwise. Fight me. Anyways, majority of the Cuphead characters are gay because I say so. Um, what else? Oh yeah, literally just majority of the Undertale characters, they're definitely gay in some way. I'm sorry. H how could you be an Undertale character and not be gay? Actually, there's probably some characters I could point to, but like... That... I, I don't fucking care right now at this moment, okay? Um, point is, majority of these characters in the AU are gay. Um, bite me on that opinion. Gay people are cool. Anyways, I should get to the next part of this segment. Music! Okay. So, why am I talking about music for this series? Okay, let me explain. So, to those who don't know, which is probably a lot of you guys, but I do have a music background. I don't know whether or not it'd be considered a small background or a big one, but it is a background nonetheless. You see, from 2nd to 5th grade, I was in school choir. I did church choir from 9 to 12. Um, I was in multiple school plays and was actually in an acting group from 2020 to last summer. And I play multiple instruments. Also, I'm in the professional theater class in my school. So, yeah. Um... And when it comes to my instruments, by the way, from 3rd to 6th grade, I played violin, I've played piano since I was 10, I've played ukulele since I was 13, and I've played the Omnichord since I was 15. To those who don't know what the hell an Omnichord is, um, search it up. It's a really cool, rare instrument. Um, I'd love to talk about my Omnichord at some point here on the channel. If y'all would love to learn about the Omnichord, um, feel free telling me so that way I could make a whole video about it. Like. Just cause. I love to spew out my special interests and hyperfixations and shit. And I I love music a lot. So I'd love to talk about some of the more obscure shit like that. So yeah. And to anyone who knows what the hell an Omnichord is, please tell me in the comments. Holy shit, do I need someone else to talk to about the fucking Omnichord? But yeah, if you couldn't guess, I have a hefty background in music and... Also, I am a theater kid. I forgot to point that out. I am a theater kid. I know, guys. That's very cringe. Very cringe of me. But it's honestly not a shocker. So, yeah. Because of my music background, um, there is definitely a lot that I know. I don't know, like, notes and shit like that as much. But, like, I, I know how to play music. Um... You could ask me to play a song and I'll like, and I might know what the hell to do with playing it. I'm not like an expert, but I know how to do some basic shit at least. Um, and I actually do want to learn to write my own music, which is kind of why this is involved. Um, I'm going to say it. Crossing Bounds will have original music in it. Now, I likely won't have any original music in the prologue because I'm still learning how to write my own music. Um, like, I have around three songs that I'm working on right now. One of which being a My Little Pony fan song um, about Twilight. One of them is a fully original song called Sweater Weather. It's about, my, it's about gender dysphoria. I've talked about it a few times on my socials, mostly Instagram. But yeah, that's the song that exists. And the third one, I am keeping that as a secret. You guys will find out what it is soon. Don't know when soon is, but you will learn soon. But yeah, um, music has had such a big impact on me, especially with some of the special interests used in this AU. 
especially Sonic, um, MLP, and Steven Universe. Mostly Steven Universe and MLP, though. One of the best ways I like to word this is, My Little Pony is what made me want to become a musician. Steven Universe is what made me want to become a songwriter. Because when I first got into My Little Pony, it really opened up my eyes. <laughs> I, I just realized that's a My Little Pony song reference. Open up your eyes and see the world through where I stand. Me among the mighty, you cage and my command. I'm so sorry. I am. I am a nerd. <laughs> Anytime I accidentally reference song lyrics, I will be like that. It's like that one trolls clip that keeps popping up on my Instagram feed. Holy fucking shit. That is just me in a nutshell. What is wrong with me? Um. But yeah, no, it really just got me into becoming a musician, especially since it had that sort of Disney Renaissance era form of music in the earlier seasons. Now, am I saying I hate the later seasons music? No, I actually love some of the later seasons with their music. I also really love Equestria Girls music. MLP is definitely what got me into becoming a musician, but Steven Universe is what really made me want to get into songwriting because when i learned that rebecca sugar wrote their own music in the series i was like what the fuck that's amazing and then i also learned that she wrote some music in adventure time I'm, and i was like holy shit this person is awesome at their work <laughs> i love rebecca sugar okay and obviously if you couldn't guess by me mentioning my little pony's music I love Daniel Ingram's music. I'm gonna tell y'all this to y'all who don't know, Bust Up Billy is having its music made by Daniel Ingram. Yes. So we're gonna get some bopper ass music in Bust Up Billy. To y'all who don't know this, now you know. The My Little Pony fans are here to haunt you. <laughs> we, we are here. To, to stay behind you and you must deal with us no matter what. We are always watching. We, we see that Daniel Ingram is here, guys. We will follow. But yeah, no. Steven Universe with like some of its music, especially like Stronger Than You or the song that really opened up me into getting into Steven Universe, It's Over, Isn't It? Which I did actually do a song cover of. Music is one of my biggest things. And since I'm into musical theater, yeah, no, it's even amplified even more. I'm going to tell y'all this now. To give y'all an idea of how obsessed I am with musicals, lately I've been having such a massive hyperfixation towards the musical Six. Go check that out if you're not familiar with it, by the way. It's about the Six Wives of King Henry VIII. It's amazing, and I highly recommend checking that out. Um, for my 15th birthday, I did actually get to go see Hamilton in person with my mom. It was amazing. Um, I have vinyl sound, vinyl versions of the soundtracks to Wicked, The Greatest Showman, um, what else? I have a few musicals. Chicago. I love Chicago. Y'all do not talk to me about Chicago. Fun fact, um, in the th closest theater nearby me, and my, that's in my hometown, they were gonna have Chicago, um, being performed in a few months. And my mom and I really wanted to see it because we are obsessed with Chicago. And when we heard that they were going to be opening up tickets to go see it, my mom kept checking. And as soon as they opened up, the tickets sold out immediately. And my mom could not get tickets for me and her, which sucks because I love Chicago and she loves Chicago. Um, and in a few, in like next week, as I'm recording this video, I will be go seeing Legally Blonde at um one of the community colleges nearby where i live and also last halloween i dressed up as the musical version of heather chandler from heathers so that gives you a good idea of like how musical obsessed i am yeah so if you guys can tell music is definitely going to have some importance to crossing bounds more specifically like characters that are from material that is very music focused in some way. So like for sure the Steven Universe and MLP characters are, 
Possibly also the characters from like Cuphead, Bendy, and Sonic. I'm not fully sure yet. Um, but for sure, I'm gonna be doing some of the Owl House characters because I want to spite Dana Terrace. Okay, so to those who don't get the fucking context to this, Dana Terrace, creator of the Owl House, apparently hates musicals. And I'm sorry, how can you hire an entire cast that can fucking sing? And I don't just mean like, you know, sing good, but they can fucking sing. Like, search up the Owl House characters singing or Owl House VAs singing, and you'll get what I fucking mean. But like, Dana, how can you hire? How can you hire an entire cast that could fucking sing so well and not make a musical episode? I am sorry, that feels wrong. That feels like a mistake. It, it just feels wrong on so many levels. So it has to be done. I, I'm gonna tell you all this now. I'm gonna have to write an entire musical episode just to spy Dana Terrace. <laughs> Dana Terrace, if you are watching this video, I don't think you are, but if you are, we have to put up a fight for this shit. I'm sorry, okay? O okay, I, I, I love your work still, though. I, I think you're amazing, and whatever is next in what you're making, I will definitely support you. I, I, I just hate the fact that you don't like musicals, okay? I'm gonna have to put up a fight about that shit, okay? <laughs> but yeah, for sure, um, since I'm learning my own music, do not expect anything in auditioning where it's like, oh, you have to know how to sing. I'm not gonna put people on the spot like that. I'm just letting y'all know so mm -hmm. that way, if you are wanting to audition in the project as a voice actor, do keep that in mind. Um, and if you cannot sing as a character, you know what, that's fine. We could find someone else in the cast who could sing as that character if it's needed. You know, I don't wanna put everyone on the spot being like, hey, we're having a music, um a whole musical thing and everyone needs to be involved no i am open to hearing what some people are able to do and not do you know i completely understand so yeah i want to let that be known but i am still gonna spite dana terrace okay i will so i, I think that's all It's just either been way too long or it got deleted on accident, most likely. So I'm doing this now. Um, thank you all for enjoying this video. As a lot of you guys know, this video is going to be uploaded on April 11th, 2024, which to those who don't know is both my 17th birthday and the channel anniversary for Hawaii Pony Productions. I've been doing this for six years now and seeing how many people have been supporting me here on this channel and are really supportive of this project happening even to having the creator of one of the pieces of media that i'm using for my au like support this project is kind of a big deal to me you know i i just want to say thank you all for all the support towards this au and also my channel as a lot of you guys know, I've been through so much shit and knowing that I could always come back here to my channel and do what I love, it just means the world to me. Like, I, I love that. And I hope you guys enjoy this series when episodes of it start coming out here on, on my channel, you know? And I hope a lot of you guys are excited to see other content of mine. I have so much planned right now and I hope you all enjoy what's coming. Um, every single time I've tried doing this part, it's always been super long, so I'm trying not to go very emotional or everything, but genuinely this story means a lot to me. It originally was just some fan fiction I made on Wattpad that was supposed to be 10 to 12 chapters and then I was going to make it into an audio drama as a sort of origin story to my channel, which now my channel lore and the AU itself are completely separate things, um, which is probably for the better anyways, because as I wrote more and more of this story, it just became its own independent 
um, crossover project that I just really liked. And I love this so much to pieces. And as I've developed it throughout the past six years, I've been through so much and I've written so much of what I've been through. And a lot of it was without re realizing. Like an example, um, one of the topics that is gonna be addressed is death. And to those who don't know, I struggle with what is called feminine phobia. At least that's how I pronounce it. it. I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly, but basically to those who don't know, that's the phobia towards death, whether it be yourself or towards your loved ones. And I experienced this for both myself and my loved ones and it's so hard trying to deal with it and when i wrote some of that into my au it just really hit hard and i am excited to talk about some of the other sort of topics that are going to be talked in this au and also like just anything that i've written <sighs> oh god this au just means the world to me and i hope you guys enjoy it when episodes of it are going to start coming out and yeah if you guys want to continue to support me um i have a bunch of social medias um you can follow me on twitter instagram tumblr blue sky probably a bunch of other shit tiktok my tiktok is dead but i really need to revive it once my laptop comes dear god I also have a GoFundMe to help me out right now with everything that's going on in my life. And I think that's really it. So, uh, I mean, so until next time, I'm Itzel or Itzel, whichever way I want to pronounce my name, aka Quiet Pony Productions. And I'll see y'all the next time I plan disgracing this side of the internet. So until then, adios, goodbye, you remember. I, I actually don't have a fun fact about anything. I, I, actually, no. Did you guys know that the lead singer of Bowling for Soup, Jared, I actually don't remember his last name, but I know his first name is Jared. Um, he, he voices Danny from Love Handle in Phineas and Ferb. He also sings the intro to the Phineas and Ferb theme. Um, but guess what? He also sung in the main theme of Sonic Unleashed, Endless Possibilities, and guess what? He also voices Chuck E. Cheese. Why do I know this? I have no fucking idea. But now you will know too. Anyways, I'm going to bed, see y'all. And happy birthday to me. And happy six years on my channel. Yay.